and welcome back to the book and life podcast today we are going to have a brand new book guest on whether they're an author an editor a producer you'll never quite know so you're in for one hell of a ride but today i just have to uh do the adverts and then i'll get us straight into that most important conversation and as as we do every week um i'm going to read the shadow which is part of the Time Guardian series, and this is book four from Marianne Curley. The battle is over, the war is won. A prophecy complete, but life can't just pick up where it left off for even, struggling to cope with tragic loss, at odds with friends in the guard. He finds himself adrift, jumping in shadows and sensing someone who can't possibly be there. Blaming herself for the goddess Athena's death, Giselle swears revenge to fullify the immortal's plan for world domination, but Giselle hadn't planned on love, and that leaves her with an unbearable choice. Should she follow her heart or the strings of a goddess short on praise but high on expectation, who continues to pull her from the grave? As the guard and the order battles through the past and into an impossible future, darkness looks round every corner. The fight for the world's survival rests with just one. Is it friend or foe who stands in the shadow? And just a reminder that The Price of Freedom by Rosemary Aiken, sorry, Rosemary Rowan, um, is being donated to the Ukraine refugee crisis. And here's the blurb for her book. It's uh, one of her... Roman British crime series, which was written under her maiden name. All editions can be found online where all books are sold, even her agents donating her commission. Sorry, I don't have the blurb for that, but uh, that's that's what she's doing. And now, without further ado, let's get you to the guests. Welcome back to the Book and Life podcast, guys. I am so honored because we have a truly amazing writer coming on today to talk to you and I just practically screamed when I I saw that she'd accepted this so I'm not going to hang around too much longer I'm going to introduce you and to her and I'm going to let her amazing words do all the talking so without further ado please everybody welcome Danny Atkins Hi, hello. Thank you so much for inviting me on. It's been really nice to uh, to get the chance to chat to you. Yeah, and the great thing about you know this called podcast, and I, I think I've I've said it a few times, is it's just a place where two writers can come and have a cup of coffee for half an hour to an hour and just laugh and just have that openness because we are humans just like everybody else. You know. Oh goodness. So- yes. <laughs> Yep, and so we deal with a lot, and we deal with stresses and pressures and everything that goes on with the world helps, you know, it doesn't always help us, but it it impacts what we're doing. Um, Sometimes sharing that journey with people really can, I don't know, I don't like saying help them understand the, you know, this crazy life that we're all living, but I think it kind of takes away some of the fear and the the barriers that we all live through absolutely yes and I think writing is is quite a solitary lonely profession or it can be so it's uh it's really important to keep reaching out you know in in all sorts of directions to other authors and to to friends and and to and to the real world because you you can't really write about people if you're not connecting with them on every level so yeah and I think a lot of us felt that more than anything during COVID because what people don't actually realize is authors are very social people. We might get the reputation of being trolls who sit at a desk and drink whiskey and type away on a typewriter all the time, but we're really not. Like we go to the supermarket like everybody else. We we, all, we sure do. Yeah. We all so hang out our washing. We're you know we're the average Joe. You know, and, and I I I just I love it when people come to me at signings and they say. So, you know, what brand of whiskey do you drink? <laughs> I, I, it, I don't. 
it, it's really strange because I probably had exactly the same, you know, misconceptions before I became an author and I thought it would be very different than that. It, it is. It's just a job. You know, it, it might be a job that we're passionate about and that we've always dreamt of doing. And, and we're really lucky to do something that we love. But, it, you know, at the end of the day, still a job. And sometimes on Monday morning, you know, you're not in the mood for it. And nope. <laughs> uh, and, it, and it does seem nice you know when you think I'm going on holiday and I'm not going to take the laptop um oh I have not just... managed that yet oh oh have you have you no, not no. I I well, can't I'm... do it I can't seem to let it go at all I've I've seen oh. me writing in the hospital wards being oh, that gosh. addicted to the like addicted to the characters that I I've, I've literally said to consultants wait a minute just one minute <laughs> I gotta get this down and they're like standing there and their foots are tapping and they're looking at me like yeah really? no, they, they may think you're crazy no I've um, yeah. I've discovered if you fly and I take so much rubbish with me when I go on holiday that I actually can't take my, my laptop because of the it puts me over the weight limit so that's oh, a really yeah. nice in, enforced holiday but uh, but I'll always throw a notepad in just in case because you you don't you know you never know there might be a brilliant idea and, and you can't trust memory sometimes to uh, you know it's yeah. like keeping a pad by your bed side, which is something I know writers are meant to do uh, yep. and also do, but I, I very rarely do it. So you've got and that middle of the night idea that seems like it's the best idea that anybody has ever had. And then unfortunately, when you, when you sort of the alarm goes in the morning, you realize it was actually total rubbish. But yep, but. yep, I've been there. Or I woke up and I thought, oh, this is brilliant. Notes out on the phone and he's looking at me and going, I sleep can't gotta get this down and then I read it yeah. back in the morning and I'm like what the yeah. <laughs> it's complete Last gibberish <laughs> you know and I've written like a thousand words and I'm looking at it going I don't have no idea what I was trying to write oh well they always say that nothing you write is ever wasted so I... no maybe not so tell no. us about your new book and and what was it that sparked this idea for you uh, my my new book, which is going to be out in two weeks today, so it's really yep. close now, is The Memory of Us. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, a, I, like most of my books, they it's centred on a, an emotional drama. Um, and I like to feature everyday people finding themselves in situations that are potentially life-changing. Um, I'd like to have a background of family and friends, um, but I touch on things that, you know, perhaps uh, are less romantic. So it does it's not your normal, you know, romance book, I suppose. I do like to have a love story in there, but there will always be some form of angst, be it an illness or grief or a falling out with somebody that, you know, you're very close to. So I'm trying to sort of keep one foot in reality um but all against a backdrop that I hope people will find um relatable um but also you know like the kind of thing in a book club where you you have a discussion and the, the question well what would I do in that situation because I love books like that which actually you know take you out of your everyday life put you in the character's dilemma and then force you to you know to think it through um so that that's the kind of book I enjoy reading so I suppose it's natural that that would be the kind of book I enjoy writing um and I have two main characters in this book um I've written a lot about friendships but this is the first time that I've written about two sisters as the main Ooh. characters yeah. um and I really wanted to explore that close connection that that relationship that's more than just best friends because it can tip over into you know not being friends at all um yep. but the love that is in the case of my two characters Lexi and Amelia is is so strong that when tested they will each do whatever they can to help the other um even at the cost of their own happiness so that was quite an an interesting avenue to explore how far will you go to, for the people that you love um, I, and what were you are you willing to give up for them? And I find that such an interesting topic because I did one with twins, so I ah. looked at a relationship between twin sisters whose one ends up turning on the other, and what 
it, almost the question through the whole series it, and and I'm lucky enough that they're letting me write as many as I feel um, fits the series but it, it, it really is that question of how much is too far from Marie like where is the point where she's not going to go to her sister's aid she's not going to break her body for her sister or she's not going to do these things and it and I've noticed now that there is like almost a fun side to um that kind of show that kind of topic now that you're seeing because we're also seeing um twin love which just came out on i think it was amazon prime and that's hosted by the bella twins nikki and brie bella and it's about twins dating twins different twins oh. and do identical twins fall for the same person everything in twins are usually identical so do, what does that mean and it kind of goes into the science of it as well and i think I just find that really interesting, especially since my, my series has come out and then I got to see your book and I was just like, hmm, maybe I'm not the only one thinking along these lines. So it was super interesting for me. So what uh, that, would you that, say sparked the idea for this? Um, I think more that I, I knew that I wanted to write a romantic story, but I wanted there to be a twist. I didn't want it to be just a straight rom-com. Uh, as I say, I wanted the sisters to be close, but I wanted them to be challenged by um, something that happened in the past, as well as something that was occurring in the future, and to see how that that played out, um, and, and where loyalties were still unbroken, and and where they were tested. So I think that was that was just the general idea. I'm not a great planner in advance. I I know a lot of authors are meticulous in their planning and there'll be chapter by chapter breakdowns of exactly where the book's going to go I'm not like that um mm -hmm. the synopsis that I write for a publisher bears only a fleeting resemblance to the book that it <laughs> that turns out at the end um and that's not because I'm deliberately veering off path but it it's I find it more liberating to let the story sort of meander I I yeah. don't plan chapters in advance because then I would I would be bored writing them because I would feel like I've already written them so what will happen when I'm writing is I will always know where the book ultimately is going to go I think in pretty much every book I've written I could have written the last chapter before I even wrote chapter yeah. one but I haven't I like to write sequentially so that I find the scenes and, and meet the characters in the same way and at the same rate that a reader will so yeah. that I, I don't get um, ahead of myself. And, and that that seems continuity wise to make more sense to me. Um, I don't have, you know, any idea apart from maybe three or four major scenes that I, I know, well, that would be nice to come somewhere in the book. Well, that will be heading towards that. But I don't always know where the, those are going to go. And, and normally it's only the next day's writing that I probably already know which direction I'll, I'll be heading and beyond that bit of a mystery but yeah um, I think that's incredible because um my myself like when I get the idea I usually have a set of scenes in my head and I make notes so that I don't forget things because I don't that's my I suppose my biggest fear in life is that I forget stuff um so even though I'm I do plan, I don't maybe plan as well as I should because usually what starts off is a rough guide to my, I'm going to do this, never works out that way. I look at some chapter <laughs> breakdowns at the end and I'm like, I went somewhere, but definitely not this way. You know, like, so I, I tend not to share that with the publisher because I know there's a 99.9% .9 chance that the synopsis and the chapter breakdowns is not going to match the book that I had in. No, so. no, no, yes, it, it's very rarely done. I mean, you're lucky if you've got a publisher that just trusts you and, and knows that, you know, you'll get there in the end. But um, I, I can understand why they would like to know what they're they're taking on. But yeah, um, exactly. it, it does have a habit of um, changing. But I think, you know, as long as you're writing that, the book that you, that's still in your head then then you can't go far wrong hopefully. and i think i think that's the advice i always give like any new writers that that we've had new writers come on the show and, and newly published writers that they come on the show and i always kind of give the same thing it's like write what's inside of you because if you're passionate about it 
and you're madly in love with the characters and you're madly in love with the story that comes through with like your tone and your words and your readers pick up on that and they can feel that and they can feel when you've over edited something and they can feel when you're you're holding back and as far as for me personally concerned i that's like my worst nightmare is to read a book where an author is maybe not connected into the characters because then i can kind of pick that up and have that sense of disconnect too have you ever experienced yeah. that yeah i mean if they don't feel real to you you can't possibly hope that they're going to feel real to a reader so these people have to exist in your head as, as you know almost like a, another family member an invisible family member and i don't write particularly fast so they they're in my head for a very long time they're, they're living in my house for about a year um yep. this yep. this cast of invisible people um um my husband and i will talk about them over dinner and you know i get him very involved in the process whether he, whether he wants to or not so we will discuss it and you know sometimes we'll we'll have disagreements i'll say that something and he'll say well I don't think he'd say that and then mm -hmm. then we'll have a few stony moments and and he, he's actually quite quite a good judge I mean for somebody yeah. that reads very little and doesn't obviously read him in, in the genre that I'm writing yeah he's, um it, it's quite refreshing because he he can see the characters and and that meant if he, he can see them then I'm sure other readers will be able to but uh, yeah, and sometimes the characters, you know, they, they go off piste and then you have to kind of like rein them back in and, and yep. get them back. You know, they, they can be an unruly bunch in your brain if you're not careful. Oh, I've, I've been there. I have one particular character, no matter what other book I'm writing, he will pop in and he will annoy <laughs> me until I write down the quote of his, whatever it is he's trying to say. Like, and yeah. he will bug me and I think because that series isn't over he hasn't like finished telling his story and it's just like a, this annoying nap where I'm trying to do edits for other things and I'm trying to do other things especially at university and you're studying and I'm just like get away like I'm I'm trying to study here like oh, I'm trying to get this done and I'll, I'll find it done later but you yeah. never you never do and I've kind of carried that bunch of cast around with me since 2008 when I started oh, writing down their kind of their profiles and their ideas and and I do the same thing with my husband I will sit and I will talk to him about oh, Marie's done this but I don't know how to get her out of this situation and he'll be like he doesn't read my genre and, and, and he's only read one of my books and he's not a big fan but he will be honest and be like well she's a dumbass and somebody should tell her she's a dumbass <laughs> you know or, or you know just go to something else like go to a next scene or go to the next character and and i'm sure she'll tell you at some point how to how she gets out of it you know so yeah and i i would be absolutely lost without my my sounding board and i've actually been super lucky because in the last sort of year um i ended up creating sort of a, a discord where we all are kind of readers and we're all fans of books and we all go on there and we have a little fantasy is a little fantasy one and we all share mythologies and ideas and it's amazing just having that conversation where you guys can just jump in a call and have a laugh and talk about it what ideas comes to the surface and sometimes that writer's plot will just literally melt out of my head because I've been sitting listening to these people talking about their different ideas and some of them are just fan writers, you know, fan fiction writers. Uh, some of them are just writing for fun. Others are ones that are trying to get into publishing. And then there's ones like me who actually are published and who are kind of just trying to find that community that you can share with and you can you can have that connection with. Yeah, I think it. nobody really understands what it's like to write apart from another writer. I mean, there's, there's a lot of misconceptions. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, you do need to speak to other authors. Um, and just to, even if it's, you know, not sorting out a, a plot problem, it, it's just yeah. the, you know, the everyday difficulties sometimes that, you know, mm -hmm. which, which perhaps, you know, 
aren't so easily viewed from from outside of the profession it's like any job that you do then yeah there's niggles okay. and things that that yeah. only other people who are doing the same work can probably understand I think but most I, of my complaints will be I can't get this computer to work or I've got a squeaky uh, keyboard and it's driving me insane yeah yeah that I've I mean, I, in a way, I think it must have been easier back in the day when you wrote everything by hand and, and yep. you, you know, but, um, yeah, we're so reliant on technology. And then that awful moment where you think you might have accidentally pressed delete on something that you hadn't saved when you should have saved. and Or your whole book looks like it's vanished and you can't find it. Yep. Uh, there too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that sick moment where you think, oh, my God, I can't do it again. You know, it's. It, they yep. might have been my words, but they won't come back the second time. You know, I was lucky yep. to catch them the first time round. I was, I was lucky. I lost a six hundred page book, oh, which I was no. being asked to split in two, and my computer just it crashed. It just it went, and I remember running through to Ian, and he, thank God he's good with computers. And I was just like, we gotta, we gotta get the book, but I, I can't lose. I gotta oh, lose no. all these pages. And two, it took him two days, but he got me the entire book back. And, oh, what a hero. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, my God. And even the publisher who was waiting patiently for it, she was breathing a huge sigh of relief because she's like, oh, Crystal, that would have been a long wait for that one to come back. And I'm like, I know. I didn't note oh. that one down. I didn't, I didn't do notes for that one. And she's like, well, go back make sure you make notes when we're editing so you know what that was in that book in case anything happens and I was like please don't let anything happen to this thing but yeah, yeah. <laughs> you learn your worst. lesson after a while and you sort yep. of save it multiple places so that you know mm -hmm. if anything happens and then at the end of the day I've, I kind of like email stuff to myself you know from whatever I've written just so if nothing else fails I can find it there so that that's my handy tip yeah, that is a very handy tip because there's so many of us that will forget. Like, especially if you had a long writing day, you get called yeah. away to do something. The most of us will forget to, like, yeah. turn the computer off. Um, I've seen Ian actually finding me asleep on the keyboard and dragging me to bed and not turning the computer off. So when I get up in the morning, it's exactly where I left it on the bit I've left it. You know, and it, I feel lucky for that because... I think I would have driven myself insane if I didn't. And the great thing is I now use um, Dropbox. So no matter where I am, what I'm do, trying to do, I can access a book anywhere. And then, oh. I have, and then I do a saved hard copy also on the computer. And then I also put it in an email once it's done so that I have a copy of it somewhere else too. Because <laughs> I learned the same thing, yeah. <laughs> you sound super cautious now <laughs> i am after, after i honestly i must have grabbed for like an entire day when i saw that book was gone and i just didn't know what i was going to do and and luckily he got it back but yeah i i i was i was a, probably a mess like you'd have thought my cat had gotten knocked down or something i was that much of a oh, mess <laughs> you know cause it, just the idea because i had i done like I think I was averaging 50,000 words a month in that book. Oh, and gosh. That, that was just, I had started off with one idea and it ended up being two books. I, I didn't realize I got into the second one and I had just continued on writing. And it wasn't until the publisher said, whoa, you you put two books together that I clicked. But yeah, no, I was like, that was my nightmare moment. So Tell us, how did you get inspired to be a writer and to get into this crazy world that, you know, that we occupy? Uh, I think I've always wanted to write, even as a child, I'd, I'd be mm -hmm. that. I mean, and so many authors have exactly the same story that we're the ones that have been scribbling short stories when, you know, or writing poems or mm -hmm. writing little scripts and, and things like that. Um, so I was um, the same, doing that my whole life. I, I think I wrote my first attempt at a book when I was about eighteen years old. Um, wow. I, it was rubbish, and it, um, it it got turned down. And then throughout my early adult life, I probably maybe did four or five attempts at, at other books. Um, it was back in the day when you physically didn't 
have the opportunity to do anything else except type them out by hand. Nobody had yep. computers. We were all talking about old-fashioned typewriters, mm -hmm. um, photocopying them and sending them off and then waiting a very long time for somebody to, to pass on it and then send it back in the post to you. So it was, I mean, yeah. you know, the immediacy that we have now with, you know, being able to do everything electronically, just send it off at the press of a button was a luxury we didn't have then. And I think it, that slowed down the impetus for me. Uh, and when something wasn't accepted, which nothing ever was back back in the day, I um I would sort of stop writing for, for a long time, you know, maybe years in between. And then another idea would pop up and and then life gets in the way and I had my family and didn't write for a very long time. Really only settled back down to writing properly again um, when my daughter went off to university. And it was um, a, a bit of, I, I would say, it sounds wrong to say empty nest syndrome because my son was still living at home and that's a bit rude to him to not yeah. think he's part of the nest. But it, it was filling that sort of emptiness where, you know, I, I hated going up and seeing her bedroom empty. So I, I wrote this story and I named a lot of the characters after her friends and her friendship group, both at home and at university. Um, and I really enjoyed that book. And that was the first book I'd written in a very long time that I actually thought, well, this this one might stand a chance. Um, it didn't initially, though, like, like so many people, um, it was rejected. That was, um, I think, back in... I, must have been about 2011 I wrote that one um, and eventually having by that time my daughter had left university when um, and had gone to work in publishing mm -hmm. and a lot of people were going down the self-published route um, yep. which I had never ventured down because a I'm not at all technical minded and I thought that that was going to be somebody who had an, an awful lot more computer knowledge than me yeah, um, and also because in the back of my mind it was kind of tangled up in those days with vanity publishing and I kept thinking yeah. if it hadn't been good enough to be picked up by um, a so-called traditional publisher or a proper publisher it probably wasn't worthy of of being read by anybody apart from anyone related to myself yeah so, I think we all have that self-doubt in there too especially when you absolutely. get hundreds of, yeah I've been there I've been there thinking you know what am I doing and I was lucky enough I found myself into the independence um uh, independent publishing scene and and the freedom that I got there was a lot more than I ever expected I suppose and I always say there's like three options now in publishing there's the mainstream big boys um there's the independence which is small companies with people who are, are publishing books and there's the self-publishing and still, I suppose, the vanity publishers who are out there. And it's whatever suits the person that's telling the story. You know, if, if you want to hold out for the big time, then hold out for the big time. If you want to experience the independence and it, have that independence to be in charge of your book's destiny and your marketing and and what you write and when you write it, then, then the independence is for you. And, and if not, if you want full control of absolutely everything, then self-publishing and vanity publishing is probably the best route for them. And I think that's kind of my advice to everyone. Find what you're comfortable with, what you can live with, and then uh, explore it. it. Yeah. It just, and it is very different now. And I think back in the day when I initially self-published, um, I only did that for, for less than six months uh, yeah. before I sort of jumped over into traditional publishing. But it, there was far less that needed to be done back then because there were far less people self-publishing. I mean, now, as you say, you need to be your your own salesperson, your own market person, your own publicist. Publicist. I mean, you really need to wear a million different hats, um, and it's almost harder work to, to yeah. be doing that because when do you have the time left to actually write? Because all yeah. of these other jobs are all full-time jobs in themselves so yeah. I, you know I do take my hat off to people that um, that manage to self-publish and self-publish successfully without you know needing anybody else along the way because it's um it's and hard I, it really is and I think now with, with self-publishing there's sort of the creation of street teams there's the creation of of Instagram teams and if you can get 
one group or even just a handful of people that are excited about your book, that want to share your book, then that's how you get back to the writing because what you do is you trust them. You trust them to do posts. You trust them to spread the word, put flyers up in their local bookstores or go into their bookstores and request the book. That is what I'm seeing a lot of people doing now and a lot of people going down the social media route. So scheduling social media posts so that somebody might sit for one day a month and schedule all of their media stuff for the entire month. And then we'll maybe check it once a day to make sure that there's nobody asking questions or are looking for anything like that. And I think that's incredible, like to when you think about it, you know, just just how much that they put in. Oh, so, I mean, they're an army of, of, you know, unsung heroes, really, that, um, that a lot of people, you know, mm -hmm. through TikTok have, have made an entire career out of but it you know it without those people that who never get the thanks and never get named but are just there quietly plugging away um it it's amazing what they can do for a book and and i think every author that i've ever spoken to says you know how do i make it on tiktok you know is there a formula and of course there isn't you know it, no. it is just the people finding your book connecting with your book and, and that's when sort of some kind of like tiktok magic happens um, yeah, and it, and it goes um, viral. Yeah, yeah. And, it, yeah. and if you if you're lucky enough to have that happen to to something you've written well, then that that really is sort of like the lottery for authors, I think. So, what book are you currently reading that you would be excited to share with everybody? I'm actually rereading um, a book that I I'd read a couple of years ago, um, and I I was talking to somebody about it, and I realised that. I'd liked the book and I remembered liking the book and I just couldn't remember why I'd liked it. So I, uh, I don't often reread. Um, I mean, there's so much out there and, and my, you know, to be read pile is always, you know, halfway up to the ceiling, but I, I was reading, yep. I've been rereading the two lives of Lydia bird uh, by oh, Josie Silk, okay. um, which is a, a, a book that I, I really remember now why I adored it because I'd had and fortunately I've obviously got the memory of a goldfish because a lot of the plot I hadn't remembered I just knew yeah. that I'd liked it so I, there was an element of being able to read it afresh um this this time around um and I loved it it was um it starts with a very sad premise of uh somebody whose fiance is killed I'm not giving yeah. anything away to anybody who hasn't read that um and then through you know circumstance or I'm not going to say it's um it's actually happening, but she is able to enter a life and live it concurrently with her everyday present, where she's going through this awful grief um, and yeah. loss, and and enter another life where he actually hadn't died, and their life continues, and it it's split between two sections, so every it alternating chapters of asleep and awake. Obviously, awake is the sad where she's learning to deal with life without this yeah. this love of her life and asleep is where they're together again and yeah and and it, it's very interesting that you know along the way that there, there are elements that suddenly the perfect life that she's dreaming about you know the life when they're still there perhaps isn't always as perfect as she as she um she thought it would be and you know there's there's little niggles there and and she changes along the route and and the um, the story takes an interesting turn, and I loved it. So I would recommend that one. It's um it's a, a love story with a difference, and very like cleverly. That. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the Notebook a little bit as well, in in a way. Yes, I love the I love the Notebook. I love the book. I love the film. I can practically say every line along with uh, Ryan Gosling and in, in the film. So yep, and we all we all yeah. we all have soft spots. Let's let's be honest with it. When it when you're a romance writer, there's certain movies that you just know and you just constantly go back to and, and watch. Well thank you so much Danny for coming on the show today. It's been a truly amazing honor to have you on and I really <laughs> hope you're gonna come back when you've got another book coming out so we can promote you even harder and help you <laughs> reach even more people because truly uh your work is incredible and uh, oh. i was so honored to have you on today i've been it's been my pleasure to spend some time with you thank you so much for asking me
for any of reason. Of course, yeah. yeah. And uh, guys, stay safe and uh, check back next Monday for more content and more laughs, hopefully. <laughs>